everybody. It is January 8th, 2009. I am Sonic Sons. I think this is video 377. I'm fulfilling a request for someone to use different camera angles. So before, you've seen over here. And, oh, look, look, it's over here. Oh my gosh, it's so much different. <laughs> I, I got this, you know, one room here. <laughs> it's hard to find places where you won't be interrupted. <laughs> uh, which is a key component in making these YouTube videos. Okay, so technology is um, weird. <laughs> Very, very cool. I mean, use technology to make this and put stuff on YouTube and the, and the things. I, I mentioned before, like, uh, artificial intelligence and questions of ethics was a video I did. Uh, singularity. Probably should have titled Technological Singularity as opposed to the singularity in Black Hole. But anyway, <sighs> about the possibilities of, of um, oncoming technology. Well, here, here's one crazy thing for you. And I feel particularly compelled to report on this uh, when 60 Minutes did a thing just, just a few days ago on mind-reading technology. Okay, so uh, so here's the statistic. You heard of, like, you know, uh, I don't know, EEG machines or MRIs that can look into the brain? Isn't like a specialized MRI? Uh, anyway, well, I don't know all the acronyms. The fact is there are things that can look into the brain and see electricity zapping around and stuff. And, you know, so far they've been used... Um, you, you, you've heard of, I don't know, uh, if someone suffers head trauma. You know, they might do a brain scan, see a CAT scan, there's another thing that can look at your brain, sort of things like that. Um, so, you know, like anything else that has anything to do with technology, this stuff has been getting faster and faster and better and better and new iterations are coming around. And the thing they're putting on 60 Minutes was, um, well, you, you, have to, you have to lie down or something uh, in this big old machine that scans your brain uh, in real time uh, while you're looking at a picture of something. And uh, there are ten objects they've loaded into their system. There was like five tools, I think, of five um, residences. So like, there was like hammer, screwdriver, you know, saw, yada yada. And there was like apartment, igloo, mansion. You know, things that are relatively uh, easy to understand, relatively distinct, as opposed to, I don't know, memorizing like a complicated logical argument or something like that. Um, so they scanned a whole bunch of people in this, like, okay, you know, stare at the picture of this igloo. Okay, think about the igloo. Okay, we're scanning your brain. Just stay there, stay there, stay there, okay. Um, and they've gotten it to the point where, without asking what you're staring at, without, you know, the computer knowing or being told uh, what, you know, what picture is currently being presented, the computer can look at your brain in real time and go, ding, 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 ding. you're looking at an igloo. <laughs> Which, you know, is... That's okay for the moment right there. I mean, you know, whatever. That's a nice little thing off to the side of our, of our, of our the things we need to worry about. Who particularly cares what someone does in this big old complicated machine somewhere off somewhere experimental thingamajig. But as we all know, uh, technology gets better. This is interesting. Because to the point that in 60 minutes, they brought in someone who had never been scanned before. And they brought him in and said, okay, you know, uh, we'll give you 10 pictures in a row. You look at that picture, you think about that object, the computer will not be told what's what. The thing was 10 for 10 of looking at the brain and knowing what it is you're thinking about. I mean, there's only, there's only 10 different things you could be possibly thinking of. So, you know, the computer's uh, got sort of a leg up to begin with. The guy there was saying, and then, like, five years, uh, we'll be able to look at complicated thoughts. Ugh. You know, maybe not even five years, maybe 10 years, 20 years, 100 years. I don't know. Probably, probably not, I don't know, 120 years, though. Um... Whenever this stuff really comes around, this could be interesting. <laughs> Dang, guys. Um, I've seen a couple other things. I remember when they, they announced um, uh, Emotive. That's, I think it's named a company, isn't it? That's, anyway, it, 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 it is a company out uh, going for a, a mind-reading interface for video games. And seriously, it looks right out of sci-fi. It's this big old, like, crazy hat-type thing you put on your skull and... It reads your thoughts, and it takes like a while. You know, uh, you have to you have to program it. It'd be like, okay, we're gonna go up and down now. Okay, think about up. Okay, now think about down. And you can do that for like half an hour or something. You know, and it won't do craziness. Like you know, you can't just like think about acrobatics and make a guy do incredible acrobatics exactly as you're thinking about it. And you know, and just do like full sword play combat or something with each every angle of the blade and every. No, no, it doesn't do that. Yet. <laughs> At some point, this company or some other company, I don't know, someone's going to come up with that. Which, you know, in some ways would be really cool. I mean, 
I can make for really cool video games, though it would possibly be an incredible contribution to the obesity epidemic, or obesity problem, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> because everyone doesn't even have to move their thumbs anymore, we're just going to sit. Uh, the one that could be a, a great boon to me, I mean, I'm always talking about, you know, I, I have creative thoughts, you know, particularly, like, I, 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 have, I have visual thoughts, for instance, there's nothing. Um, recently, uh, I think there was a, a uh, was it a Japanese lab? I'll find a link. Anyway, um, they, they've managed to have someone looking at a word, and then this thing looks at your brain and figures out what it is you see. Which isn't that impressive when, like, well, why don't we choose a camera to find out what he's seeing? But this could apply, at least in theory, to things you aren't physically seeing. Like, thinking. Like, if you visualize a thing, like, oh, you know, I saw this person the other day, she looked like this, and then, <laughs> ding, and appears on the screen. Look, there, yeah, that's it. Or like, you know, I'm imagining a dragon, it looks really cool, ding, that's on the screen. Which would be great for me, because <laughs> I often see things in my head very visually, um, but I can't draw worth crap. <laughs> I'm not even good at describing this stuff very well. Um, you know, it's like, dang, there's a thing in my head, and I got it. And I got fine. I, mean, I, I, got, I guess be okay with the words. I certainly know how to draw, though. Ugh, I'm terrible at drawing for the moment, anyway. Maybe, maybe I'll learn. I don't know. Maybe with this machine, I won't have to learn. I think it's suited to your brain. Which could be really cool. And I could just be like, hey, everyone, that stuff I'm always talking about, just like zap it into the computer. Wouldn't even need to dictate anything. But I got I remember that. Do you remember that, that show um, Heroes? It's about um, you know uh, people with superpowers, and there's this one guy who has a power of mind reading. Um, I, when I first like started seeing that guy, I was like, "Oh man, if I could meet that guy, <laughs> I'd be like creative ideas," <laughs> and he'd be like, "Ah, that's ow, ow, okay, stop." <laughs> Gah, random crap that goes around in my brain. <sighs> Or maybe I'm just being arrogant, I don't know. Any case, mind reading. That could be useful, right? I mean, they're, they're, they're talking about... Um, uh, you, you could watch someone's dreams, for instance. Someone's having a nightmare. You could, like, put the thing on their head and, like, see what they're seeing. That'd be interesting. More, more, more you know, uh, useful to it would be someone who's, like, uh, in a coma or whatever, you know? And then you could see, if, if, you know, how much they're thinking, what they're thinking about. Or someone's not necessarily a coma, but like, you know, maybe, maybe you're just, um, oh, let's say your spine is injured, you know? And so you, 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 it, it's, it's screwed up a bunch of your, you know, your hands don't move, your arms don't move. Maybe your mouth doesn't even work for some other reason. I don't know medicine at all. <laughs> I'm just saying, though, if you'd found trouble communicating, for whatever reason, mind reading thing of a jig, and just like, just, just, just talking out through the computer. That'd be pretty cool. Also, it does bring up the question of artificial intelligence. Because what happens when we come up with a perfect brain scan that kind of is like, like all the way down to the individual molecules, you know? And then what after, after that, what? Then you can like, could you run a simulation? You know, once you have enough uh, data about how all the molecules interact with each other, then can you, oh crap. This is what Ray Kurzweil was talking about, the whole singularity bit. I mean, I don't know, people.